Next is question number 47. The whooping cranes were on the verge of extinction with only 21 individuals in wild in 1941. After conservation measures, the cranes are now included in the endangered category by IUCN. The highlight of the conservation efforts is the reintroduction of the whooping cranes in wild. This was possible due to raising of the young cranes in absence of their parents by biologists dressed in crane costumes. Aircraft guided bird migration technique was used for teaching the captive bred cranes to follow the scientists to learn the migratory route. What type of animal behavior might be responsible for these captive bred cranes to follow the crane costume dressed scientists? So option A says cognitive learning, option B says habituation, option C is operant conditioning and option D says genetic imprinting. So let's have a look at all these options first. So option A is cognitive learning which is actually a constructive active and long lasting learning. So this is active constructive and long lasting so this is actually the learning where one is using its brain to learn new things in life the second is habituation which is actually the action or process of becoming habituated and Option C is operant conditioning which is the process of learning by giving rewards and punishments of learning. While option D says genetic imprinting, this is a rapid mode of learning that occurs during early life of social animals and it imposes a behavior which actually makes them to recognize or to attract to its own kind or substitute. So this is actually a rapid learning which occurs during the early life of the social animals. So yes, this is the behavior that is responsible for captive bred cranes to follow the crane costume dressed scientists. So our answer to this question is option D. Let's move to our next question. So we have our next question here that is question number 48. In the baking industry when the dough is prepared various ingredients are mixed together with the flour. At one instance the dough was fermented but failed to rise sufficiently during the baking process. Choose the correct cause from following possibilities. First the salt was mixed before the fermentation process was completed. Yes, this could be a correct reason for this because addition of salt can reduce the activity of enzyme, right? And it can also slow down the process of fermentation. So, this is a correct reason. Moving to the second, the sugar was added in excess. Yes, this could also be a possible reason because addition of sugar could possibly slow down or even inhibit the yeast activity because once we add more sugar, the yeast comes in stress as there is less water available for it to function. So, this is also a correct reason. Now the third is yeast granules were not activated prior to mixing with the flour. So yes, if 
yeast granules are not activated which means probably they are not living cells or they are not activated this can increase the mixing time so they are going to make an extensible dough once these are activated so yes this also could be a possible reason so all of these can be the possible reasons for this so one two and three all are correct and out of the given options option c has all these three statements so yes our answer to this question is option c let's move to our next question here we have another question which is question number 49 it says given below are four statements so we have to carefully read these four statements it says number one Prokaryotic cells are unicellular while eukaryotic cells are multicellular. Do you agree with this completely? I do not because eukaryotic cells they can also be unicelled. They are multicell as well as they are unicellular. For example, we have certain protists. Let's see other statements. Number two. Histones are present in eukaryotes and absent in prokaryotes. Okay, this is a right statement because histones help in the coiling of genetic material and they are clearly seen in, and yes, they are seen in eukaryotes, while as the same are absent in prokaryotes. Third, the nucleoid contains the genetic material in prokaryotes and eukaryotes. This statement is incorrect because in case of eukaryotes, we have nucleus a well defined double membrane cell organelle which is nucleus so yes nucleoid is only seen in prokaryotes not in eukaryotes i'll put a small cross sign here okay next prokaryotic flagellum okay is composed of flagellin protein that's right while eukaryotic flagellum is composed of tubulin protein this is a right statement so we have read all these four statements and we have also tried to understand the underlining concept behind this now let us see what is the question asking us the question is saying identifying which among us these are false so we have to recognize the false statements students as you can see first statement was incorrect because we have certain organisms like protists protist or kingdom protista so protist these are unicelled and they are eukaryotic clearly this is a incorrect statement Next, statement was correct. Histones are present in eukaryotes and absent in prokaryotes. This is right. Next, third statement. It was an incorrect statement as I have just told you that nucleoid is seen in prokaryotes, not in eukaryotes. Eukaryotes have a nucleus. So, this was incorrect. And the next statement is a correct statement as we have just read it that yes, prokaryotic flagella is made up of flagellin, eukaryotic flagella is made up of tubulin. So, this is a right statement. Clearly, you can see statement 1 and statement 3 is incorrect. So, let's see the options 1 and 3. 1 and 3 is given in option D. Let's keep it in a separate box. Option D. Yes, that's the right choice. Option D. Now, let us take up our next question now.